In this chapter, we're going to look at groups of effects. We're going to start with the blur and sharpen effects. So go to working files, go to projects, go on down to 1001 blurring sharpening. Now this sequence might look a little bit different than the ones we've worked with up to this point because I have clips on three tracks here. I'm going to explain that a little bit later. First order of business is to look at the blur and sharpen effects. So scroll on over here to the effects panel, click on that and open up the video effects. And there's Blur and Sharpen. I'll open that up. I'm going to scroll on down here a little bit so you can see them all. Those are the Blur and Sharpen. Now right off the bat, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six Blur effects. Do you need six Blur effects? No. I think you can probably not work with at least two of these. Camera Blur is an old one that I think has been replaced pretty much completely by Gaussian Blur. Fast Blur works just fine, but Gaussian Blur works as well. So I think Gaussian Blur is your go-to Blur effect. Directional blur is different because it looks like you're blurring in a direction, like you use this with action shots, for example. Compound blur is unique in that it works with another clip. It works with two clips at once. That's this thing I set up over here. Channel blur blurs individual color channels, so it too is unique. So I would suggest that if you're just doing regular blurring, you just stick with Gaussian blur. Its other advantages are that not only is it accelerated, like fast blur, but it also works with high bit color. That 32 means it works with 32 bit color. Not many people work with that high level of color, but still, it there it is. And it also is YUV, which is a special kind of internal thing that goes on inside Premiere when you apply effects. This means it does not convert the video from the original YUV to what's called RGB and then back to YUV. So the video remains really in its totally pristine state. So Gaussian Blur is really the go-to guy. So I want to look at the three main ones. So I start by dragging Camera Blur. And it blurs the clip right away, which is a mistake, I think. I don't think any effect should have an immediate effect as a general rule. So let's go to effect controls and you'll see that camera blur starts at 25% blur. Also has the old setup box. So I'm going to turn that one off for the time being. Let's go on down here to fast blur, apply that one. It stays in neutral as it should. And Gaussian blur also stays in neutral. Scrolling down here a little bit. I'm going to turn on camera blur now to 25. You can see how blurry that is. I'll turn on fast blur now to something like that. Maybe about the same. And when you see it blur, you notice the edges stay kind of sharp. That's one of the issues with fast blur and Gaussian blur. It's not true with camera blur. So all you need to do, though, is just turn on this little box here, repeat edge pixels. Now it looks fine. I'll turn that one off for the moment, and we'll get Gaussian blur to look more or less the same. It needs to go a little bit farther, maybe about that amount there, too. 91 to sort of match fast blur. Repeat the edge pixels. So you do see that there are different values to get the same kind of a thing. There's Gaussian. There's fast. And there's camera. So camera blur is supposed to resemble how a camera looks when you take it out of focus, but I think that in the end, Gaussian blur does the exact same thing as does fast blur. So my take is that I use Gaussian blur all the time, and I just don't worry about camera blur or fast blur. I want to go to channel blur. That is unique. So I'll apply channel blur here, and I'll turn off Gaussian blur so you can just work on channel blur. Again, channel blur starts in neutral as it should, but you can blur individual color channels. Now there's really a prominent red channel here. So if I blur the red channel, you get that kind of blur to just the red areas, which picks up other things too, little bits of the mountain there, little bits in these trees here, but it's mainly those berries or whatever that kind of tree is in the front there, that little bush. Green takes care of these areas back here because they're greener, obviously. And blue doesn't do much, even though you have a blue sky because the blue sky is so solid, it doesn't look all that blurry when you make it blurry. But that's what's cool about this. You can blur individual channels. So channel blur is kind of a fun thing to check out every once in a while. Directional blur works pretty well with things that are in motion, but the thing about things in motion is that it's hard to isolate the stuff that you don't want to have blurred. It's pretty tricky to do that inside Premiere. It requires a mask that follows the motion, and it's pretty difficult to create a mask that follows the motion here inside Premiere. So I'm just going to apply some directional blur to this bicycle rider over here. So let's just do that. And as she goes forward, you'll see how that works. I'll take the blur to the right to 90 degrees by pulling it over there like that. I'll make it blurry like this. And then we'll go forward here. The thing is, everything's blurry. It would be nice if we could keep her in focus and have the background not in focus. It's tricky to do that in Premiere. It's tricky to do that in other programs as well. After Effects is maybe the one that you could probably get away with that in, but it's hard to do. Nevertheless, that's directional blur. Let me turn that one off. I want to look at compound blur. That's this one right here. I've already got it set up. I'm going to turn it off for the time being. So I'm going to take this clip, 
I'm going to turn off compound blur, and that's how the image looked originally, the shot of the sign here. And then you can use compound blur with another layer. Notice you say the blur layer here is video two. So I selected that one because I put this clip on video two, this mask. And if I look at the mask, I've taken the mask, I've reduced its opacity to zero. If I bring it back up to full, you'll see how the mask looks. It just covers up all those things there. And by covering them all up, I can use this clip down here with the compound blur and have it blur everything but the things that are covered up or I could have it blur the things that are covered up. You take your pick. And that's how compound blur works. It works with a second layer. Depends on whether you select invert or not, but bright things could be blurred and dark things could be in focus or vice versa. I'll show you this mask here one more time. You'll see that the mask has a little bit of a gradient. So it's white here and gray here. So that allows things to be just a little bit blurrier here and less blurry here. And then the things over here are really blurry is how this works out. It's kind of a complicated thing masking, but that's how that works. That's how the compound blur works. It works with another layer and it works with the dark areas and the bright areas to make things blurry or not blurry. I want to show you another use of blur. This little setup here, it's very similar to the compound look. If I've got this mask here again, the same mask that was here, and a duplicate of this clip such that the clip on the bottom is blurred. So I'll turn off the first two here. And this clip is blurred using camera blur or any other kind of blur that I want. I put a clip on top of it that's exactly the same, it's not blurred, and then I connect that clip to this mask so that this part shows on top of the one below it. So just the unblurred part shows on top of the blurred one down here. If I turn that off, you'll see that this guy's by itself with black around the outside, which in fact is transparent. So that's another way to use blur. And it works relatively easily here because these clips are not moving. Nothing's in motion here. It's easier to mask something when it's not moving. All right, let's move on down to the non-blur effects, anti-alias, that looks for edges of things and tries to make them sharper. So back here, the edge might be that mountain. So I'm going to zoom in on the old Matterhorn here and slide over a bit. There we go. Let's pull it up a touch to the edge of the mountain. And maybe 400% might be a little too tight. Let's go to 200% instead. Try that again. If I apply anti-aliasing, it's on or off, sort of like the black and white effect. So I'm going to turn off channel blur here and make sure we're starting from scratch. I drag anti-aliasing up here to the effect controls panel, and now it's on. So we look at the edge there, off. Notice how it sort of softens edges. It's not just the edge there, but it's any kind of a place where it finds a difference in color or contrast. It tries to make it not jagged looking. So it'll actually make everything kind of soft. I'll zoom all the way out on it and fit here. I'll turn it on or off. You just kind of notice that things just get a little bit softer around the edges, around the borders of things. That's what anti-aliasing does on or off. And I would say that this is not an effect you want to call on too often. Ghosting is an interesting one. It takes other frames and lays them on top of an image. So if you're moving, it looks like you've got this kind of ghosting image. I'll go over here to the bike rider again, click on her, and drag ghosting over to her. And now we'll play this. And that's the ghosting thing. And ghosting, like black and white and anti-aliasing, is just on or off can't control let's say, the amount of ghosting. There you go. Delete that one. And finally, we've got sharpen and unsharp, which sound like they're contradictory, right? But in fact, they both do the same thing. Unsharp mask is a photographic technique that's intended to sharpen edges. Sharpen does the same thing, but has fewer controls. So let's take a look at the bike rider here. I'm going to put sharpen on the bike rider, like so. Sharpen has an amount. So right now it's in neutral. Nothing's being sharpened. But if I increase sharpen, then sharpen looks for edges, much like anti-aliasing looks for edges, and then tries to make them sharper, tries to increase the contrast there to make them look sharper. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit. So see how that suddenly started changing things, give them that kind of a glow almost? See, almost like they're shimmering, because it's finding edges and trying to make them higher contrast. It makes things look sharper as you go along. When it stops, you don't see it, but when it goes forward, you begin to see how it works. Almost kind of jittery looking. That's because it's really a lot being applied. If you want to just do a little bit of sharpening to an image that's a little soft, then you can put sharpen on and have it do that. Let's go back here and put on the unsharp mask. Unsharp mask is basically just like sharpen, so it's sort of like why you use sharpen when you've got unsharp mask. Unsharp mask gives you more control. It allows you to decide how wide of an area you're going to look, what kind of a radius around each pixel you're looking at to see where the contrast lies. Increase the radius, and so that changes the way it works. So I'm going to take the radius up a bit here to some larger number. The larger the threshold amount, the less of the effect is applied, which is kind of counterintuitive. So big numbers here, you hardly notice any difference. Smaller numbers, you notice more difference. 
Let's try that again. Get to the front there. So it just makes things look a little bit sharper, but it can also make things look a little sort of busy, depending on how much you put on. Now, the one disadvantage of the unsharp mask is that it's not accelerated where it sharpen is. And so if you're using a GPU accelerator and you apply sharpen, it will work faster. Let me turn off unsharp mask just to show you that. The yellow line now shows up because no effect is applied. If I apply sharpen to this clip, the yellow line stays on. That means it's being accelerated by the GPU. You notice when I played the unsharp mask, it kind of stopped a couple times. But here with just sharpen on, it doesn't stop. It's going to keep on playing as it goes along because it's running right off the GPU. That's the one little advantage of the sharpen. Unsharp gives you more controls. Sharpen is accelerated. So just a quick rundown again. The main guys, fast blur, Gaussian blur, and camera blur, I think your go-to guy is the Gaussian blur. And so channel, compound, and directional all have their interesting features I think are worth checking out.